Okay, so thank you everyone, first of all, for taking your time on a weekday and showing up. Okay, this I think is the first step that we should always appreciate. Like if we are grinding to this level, that on a weekday night, we leave our family or whatever we are doing and spending an hour with me. I should be thankful to you guys for showing up as well as you should also appreciate yourself that you are taking steps in the right direction. Okay, to be here. So to start with, okay, those of who don't know me, my name is Moin. Okay, so I'm just a normal trader like all of you guys. I started trading roughly a bit, three days more than two and a half years. I clearly remember like in February, 1st of February, 2nd of February of 2021, I started my trading journey, okay? So on the way, I blew up several accounts. I learned in very hard ways, okay? So my whole objective for taking these sessions is to make sure, or at least try a little bit from my side, that you guys don't face such a difficult journey that I have been through, okay? It's still not smooth, but at least better than before. That's all I can say, okay? So that's it. And if I can do it without literally not knowing anything about trading and starting at the age of 40, anyone can do it. Trust me. Have that faith in you. Okay. So we'll start with that. Now, I did send out an agenda. I'm not sure if you guys noticed it. We'll just try to go by it. Okay. Because there are quite a few items I want to cover with you all today. And as I mentioned, I would love it. Okay. If we make it as interactive as possible. Because unless you guys share with me, okay, like what are the challenges you face? What are the things you like to improve on? What are the things you are good at? Okay. Or ask me questions. It's not going to be really helpful. Okay. So let's make the best use of our time and let's be as interactive as possible. So the first thing I want to start with, quite a few of you have asked me this question personally. Okay. That how do I notice the alerts or anything in Discord. It's a very simple way to do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So typically the scenario is I do have a full-time job. Okay, and I'm literally working the whole day, right? I do work from home, so that's a benefit. Okay, so I keep my laptop on a side. Okay, at times I don't even get a chance to look into it. Okay, so let's say I want to follow like the alerts that Alpha typically gives us, right? I can be looking at my screen the whole day and looking at this, right? So what I do, it's very, very simple. Okay. You go to notifications and then you go to the accessibility settings. It's right here. Okay. And over there, just make sure that your text to speech is set properly. Okay. And you have like, the preview, just make sure that the voice... This is what text-to-speech sounds like at the current speed. Okay. This is what... So you have it set over here. Then what you do is go to your notifications. Go all the way down up to here. Text-to-speech notification. And then just type in current selected channel. Okay. So what happens is after you have done this, you close it off. All right. You get on with your work. And whichever channel, okay, this can work on the Discord app as well as on the Discord browser if you have like multiple channels open, okay. It's typically like for me, the two channels that I keep open, one the alpha trades and the other alpha options on two different browsers. And definitely my own one, the futures room, I keep it open in case somebody asks a question that either me or James, whoever is there, we can help to answer those. Okay, so I keep these three open. Like now how it works is, if any one of you can just go to the general room, our general room, and just type something here, you'll hear it reading out to me. So can I have somebody just type in something there? Anyone? Can I request you to type something here? Hello? Are you guys still there? <laughs> yeah, anything, just type anything. David21 said MHM sub. Okay, thanks, David. So you see how it works, right? So if you just go there, type anything, whatever comes up on that David channel. David21 said thumbs up, medium dark skin tone. Okay, so Discord keeps on reading it out. Okay, so you don't have to keep watching the channel 
or you don't even have to keep looking at the alert okay like how i caught the trade on rad yesterday okay like i was working fully on that time okay all of a sudden like there is nothing okay i t trade futures mainly so yesterday was a very sideways day for us it's a dumping day actually sorry my bad it was pretty dumping okay i already made my money what i wanted to do i was just sitting in the sidelines okay so i just keep this open on the side okay and these days honestly i don't trade small caps that much although it used to be my bread and butter i still love trading small caps okay i moved away a bit from it but yesterday i caught this trade just like this so all i did is this is open on the side so this is alpha okay he is posting that rad got a starter okay so all i did is right at that moment i pulled up my chart on rad okay looked at it okay very quickly i changed it okay to see like what are the daily levels what's everything in rad okay if we move on to the chart and let's move on to yesterday i think it was just around noon that he posted before you proceed any further, is there any way you can show me how to set it up one more time for the board? Absolutely, my friend. Just give me a sec. Okay, let me just drag the chart, and we will do it again. It was yesterday. Just give me one second. Yep, we are in the right space. Okay, all you do is open your Discord in your browser. Okay. Then go to the settings. Just make sure that in the accessibility settings, your text to speech is ticked off. Okay, right here. And then you just press the preview just to see whether it works or not. Once done, go to your notifications right over here. Okay, and then just make sure text to speech. What do you choose? If you choose for all channels, Trust me, you, you're you going to get nuts, okay? Like everything that is being typed on the server, it's going to read out to you. So just select this option, that for the current selected channel. So after that, whichever channels you have open in your browser, okay, you can open like multiple windows, okay? I wouldn't mind you guys opening my own room, honestly. Okay, so whatever is being typed over here, that will get read out to you. So I find it very useful to catch an alert in this manner. Okay, thanks. Does it help? Yeah, that helps. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, if you want me to go over it one more time, we will go over it again. Okay, so this is that trade. Okay, right at 11.58. So I believe around that time, right? Let's bring up the trade. Yep, 11.43. So right around that time, Alpha is posting here, right here, if we mark it at 11.43, it's right here, okay. I used to trade small caps pretty well, okay. I still do a little bit good on this. So we are right over here. I am looking at it, okay. So the first thing I did is, okay, I heard the alert. I went to my chart, okay, went right over here change it to a daily time frame, and I looked at the levels, right? Like how much room does it ha has to go, okay? That's the first thing that I did looking here, okay? So it takes just a few minutes to set the levels, okay? You basically look for areas where basically the change in price is, okay? So look here, and you don't have to go all the way up, okay? Because it's like a very quick split thing. You're looking at price levels near you, we are right about to break two dollars so you are looking here okay if we bake 210 we are good to go and we have room at least up to 250 ish okay so this is it i just saw this nothing else trust me and two dollar is a huge psychological mark we all know it right every round number is a psychological mark okay so i just added in i was waiting for this break okay so the break it tried to break it failed okay i'm still sitting on the sideline okay five minutes down so right around here when i see like okay this is a doji if we maximize it this is a doji okay still indecision the moment i saw this hammer 
this is exactly where I, my first entry was. Okay. And up to how long I wrote it? Literally, I wrote it because there is no resistance up to here. So I literally wrote this trade right up to here. Okay. And this is the place basically I saw this candle. It's an indecision candle. This candle, I scaled literally half. Okay. So I scaled literally half. I'm in good money already. So then it is just riding out. By this, it is pretty obvious that it's not going to go any more higher up. Okay. So all I did is for the rest of my things, I moved my stop loss all the way up to 248, right over here. Okay. Because 250, I knew there would be a resistance. Okay. So it was fighting around here. It was not just being able to make it. So then I figured out, okay, so this is done for the day. The moment it breaks over 20 EMA, where my 20 EMA is, right over here, I got around 260. So if you keep your trading simple, you will be continuously winning. Okay, there was a question from one of you, like how to determine your exits and entries. Okay, there is absolutely no right answer to it, or at least I haven't managed to find it over the last year or so, over the last two years or so, okay? It's a completely personal preference. You could be waiting for this to go up. If it went up or more, yep, I would have felt bad, definitely. I would not say no, but I'm happy because literally, imagine this, okay? That I went in with like a thousand shares, okay? So right over here, and this is the place where I'm scaling 50% of it, okay? So I'm not even calculating at that moment, right? How much money I'm making because I'm least bothered about it because green is green, like I said, okay? So right over here, I'm getting out, okay? So my entry is right here around 214, okay? I wrote it all the way up to here, okay? So I'm out around here, 264, my first scale. That's straight a 50 cent move, okay? I'm 50% out, okay? Next one. I'm waiting, I'm watching, okay? Nothing is happening. I did not scale more. Usually I scale 50%, 25%, 25%. I did not, okay? I took out the entire rest at 261. So if I look at it, on average, after commissions and everything, I made probably around 45 cents on a thousand share. That's like 450, okay? So for me, that's good money. I'm not one of your millionaire trader guys, okay? I'm a very simple person, like I told you, like you guys. And I'm happy with small wins, okay? My objective is small wins every day, and I compound it. So if you do that, you're in the game. That's it. Any questions, tell me before we move on to the next topic. Please feel free to ask. Make the best use of the time. No, that was pretty clear. I, I, I saw the alert late, and I missed it, mm -hmm. but... I, exactly what you're saying on that one yep so activate the alerts okay get the maximum out of the server what you can okay activate the alerts so that you hear it okay but what i will request is as soon as you hear it i respect alpha tremendously okay i learned a lot of what i know from him but i don't jump into his alerts blindly i'm sure if you ask him he will tell you pretty much the same thing have a look at that time okay Try to understand that do you have the buy-in to yourself, okay? And many of you who attended the sessions with me have heard me saying this again and again. When you are trading, your best friend and your biggest enemy is the same person. It's you, okay? You are When you are trading, you are fighting with yourself. So just don't go in blindly. Then you'll start doubting. When you look at it, before going into any trade, you should know why you are getting into that trade, okay? And what's your exit plan? What's your fallback plan, okay? My fallback plan was very simple. If it falls below $2, I would be out, okay? Now, I know because I've been trading small caps for a while that typically they rate the stop losses around 196, 198 to those portions and push it back all the way. So my stop was just about 191. So I am risking literally here, <laughs> about 25 cents to make 50 cents. Okay, that makes perfect sense for me. Okay, and another part, okay. I went to this trade with roughly about 10% of my day trading capital. 
So even if it fell below to 196 or something, I would have actually doubled down on it. Okay, lowered my average. I would be able to do it. Why? Because like I'm not going full port or nowhere even close to it, right? I'm going with only 10% of my capital. Okay, and if I double down, I'd be only putting in like 20% of my capital. It's not something if the trade doesn't work out, I will be wiped out or anything like that. Okay, because I day trade with a smaller part of my total capital and I allocate. Okay, this is for small caps if I'm doing it. Okay, this is like when I used to trade futures with my own money. This is for futures. Okay, so this is how you allocate and how you manage risk. So again, another of my favorite things, if you do two things, you will be in the game for the long run. One is risk management and the other is perseverance, the will to show up every day to learn, to grind. That's it. Okay, I'm pretty sure some of you are bored hearing me saying the same things again and again. All right, so if there's no more questions, let's move on to the next one, which is what indicators tell us and why indicators work. I want some answers from you guys. Okay, from anyone. Okay, there's no wrong answer. Trust me. Okay, so please feel free to tell me the answer. Why indicators work? And what do indicators actually tell us? We'll go through some very common indicators. Okay, that's why you see all these indicators here. Okay, but my real chart actually doesn't look like that. I'll show it to you guys. Okay, with how few indicators I actually trade. So tell me why indicators work and what are they telling us? Anyone? Well, so they tell you the movement of the stock. Okay. Any other answer? It's all about the history, right? They, they give you what, what happened in the past, right? So, I like your answer. Okay. So Raylord, you the, I like uh, your activity. answer as well. Richard, tell me, please. <laughs> Uh, the activity, the buyers, the, mm -hmm. um, is it heating up or not? Okay. The, vol the volume. Okay. Yep, you are correct. See, in any chart, okay, only two things are true. One is price and the other is volume. Okay. These are the only things which we see in real time. Nothing else, okay, trust me, nothing else that we see are in real time. Okay, if we take this chart, this is the only true part. This part, okay, nothing else is true. Anything else that you see in this chart is lagging. Whatever EMA I bring in, okay, whatever moving average I bring in, whatever oscillator I bring in, these are all lagging. Okay, now, this might change your mindset a bit. Okay, indicators work because we want them to work. Can anyone tell me why I said this? Any idea? There's no wrong answer. Feel free to say. I would say the confidence in the stock, mm -hmm. in the movement. Okay. You know, if you don't have an indicator, it's almost like you're going blind. Mm -hmm. And it, and then an indicator just help you give you, give you a little confidence to me. That's what I'm, that's what it says to me. Very nice answer. Okay, are you guys familiar with the term hard psychology or crowd mentality? Okay, we are human beings, right? So, in the past, okay, for our very prehistoric ancestors, we used to stay together in groups. Okay, and it is ingrained in our brain that we follow what the crowd does, right? What others do, we try to follow because we don't want to be left out. That is very normal human nature, okay? That's the basic of human nature, okay? If all of your neighbors have painted their houses white, very unlikely you want to paint your house red and stand out. You wouldn't because we want to conform to what the crowd is doing, right? We want, we gather strength from the crowd or from the herd, okay? That, okay, so everybody is with me on this, okay? So I have a group backing me up. I'm stronger over here, giving you more confidence, okay? So 
that is the reason indicators work okay because when i look at 9 ema right over here which is my green line a thousand other traders in this trade is looking at this 9 ema okay and all of them are thinking okay because this is what we have been taught right this is what we all learned if price is above 9 ema it's a positive trend it will only go up okay so let's start so yogan here price is above 9 ema he bought it right over here let's say seeing him 9 ema is still up so qt basically is thinking all right it's not a bad place so she bought it here price is still up so we are going up right yogan bought it here 177 okay qt bought it at 180 price is still moving up right now let's say azman is a bit smarter he wants to buy the dip okay so he says a red candle okay it's still above 9 ema i will buy here he buys 183 we are all pushing the price up okay then let's say railroad comes in he says it's still over 9 ema so the trend is holding very strong i will go in here okay we are all going into the trade right and we are pushing this up pushing this up okay after a time it just becomes a snowball effect okay so price is all over here so the institutions the big money market makers whatever you call them they have waited for the price to move up to these levels right and then they start dumping this okay when they start dumping this some of the people are thinking who have the fomo okay that oh damn such big candles i could not go in and at this level it's definitely gonna cross three okay so they are basically going in right over here all right and they start buying still they're buying right some people are thinking oh i missed it okay let me buy the dip it's gonna go up more it is not okay this is done it's finished small caps are literally pump and dump okay so most of the times okay they don't ride out so you went in here okay those of you who thought okay because they want us to get in because the more we get in the more we get committed to the trade that's how the market makers make the money okay and that's how basically this is going to get pumped up okay right over here everybody is thinking right that this is gonna get pumped all the way up to three it's so close so people keep on buying here and just look it's just dumping because whatever was the objective this was done most likely the market makers they sold off on these candles okay this one this one you see the long upper weeks okay so these are literally selling candles okay this is an indecision candle now the stock cannot decide anymore which way it wants to go so these are the only two things and look at volume right over here volume is fading okay so this tells you that the trade is literally dead okay so whoever got in over here are the ones who are making money on it okay so all the indicators do typically the most common indicators we use are the moving averages and the oscillators all they do is they show you the trend okay so if you are like me you have a hard time understanding like looking there okay when i started i really used to have a hard time looking at like where the trend is going i used to struggle honestly okay so now i don't need it because looking here i can literally see it okay i even made a custom indicator for me which basically is published in our indicator section anyone can is free to use it in trading view okay which literally shows you the trend okay in any time frame so this is all the indicator is doing okay now why one of my favorite strategies buying of the 9 ema works because simply everybody else believes in it that's it there is no other reason there is no magic guys okay because everybody thinks when it comes to 9 ema the price will keep going up okay that the 9 ema is a very good support or the 20 is an even greater support that is the only reason this works there is no other reason because whenever it comes down here somebody is buying it okay that's it same with support and resistance okay if i bring up my line right over here you can see there is a struggle here right because a lot of people who got into this trade who much earlier than us they were probably selling it right over here because they saw resistance here they were selling it okay why one of you gave the answer already 
indicators are nothing. It's a glimpse of history. Okay, the support and resistance is a glimpse of history. These are not stone walls. Rather, treat this as rubber bands. Okay, that there is no guarantee that price will stop right here or price will bounce from right here. Okay, it gives you an assumption. Okay, at best. Okay, an indication. It's called indicator, right? So it gives you an indication what's going to happen. That's it. Okay, so a lot of people are thinking just like I thought. Okay, so this was a resistance. If this broke, it's going to go up because I know by now, okay, a lot of people are thinking like me. So if it breaks here, it's going to move up. I'm at least going to get a good profit on this. That's why I got into the trade. The moment it broke this, I saw this candle. It's a very strong candle. If you look at it, it's a hammer. Okay, and the other thing is we'll cover this in a later class about the candlesticks, where the candle is, okay, the position of the candle, and right after it started shooting, that's it. Okay, this is a trade which lasted less than 30 minutes, and you're in the money if you took it. Okay, so that is the whole purpose of indicators. Don't think there is any magic bullet indicator in the world. Okay, people sell indicators for a lot of money. Okay, the indicator that I just showed you, the trend line indicator, you can see like there are companies who are literally selling you these indicators as packages for thousands of dollars, okay, or at least hundreds of dollars to buy, okay. I was a fan of this company called Luxalgo, okay. They make very nice indicators before I learned making my own indicators, okay. Just go to their website, see the price they charge, okay. So there is no magic bullet indicator. Ask yourself, if any indicator worked so well, right, why would people make a hundred bucks or several hundred bucks or even thousand selling this to you, right? They could trade with it all their lives and make way more money. They wouldn't be bothering with that, okay? So don't buy into those. Use the indicator for what it is, to identify the trend, to trade with it, to ride the wave. Any questions? Does it help what I'm telling? Yeah, I don't have any questions. I was explaining nicely. Oh yeah, that was very enlightening about uh we're the ones that's that's uh creating these indicators and making Absolutely. them work for us. Yeah. Okay. It is there because we want to see it. You know why patterns exist? Same thing. Because we all learned inverse head and shoulders, we all learned bear flag, bull flag. So when we see it, we jump into the trade and that makes the trade work out. That's it. Okay. So the trick is very simple, okay? Keep your trading as simple as possible, okay? You try to see what others are seeing. Sit a little bit maybe earlier than them, okay? Try to get in and get out a little bit earlier. That's it, okay? You don't have to take the profits all the way up here. Nobody except who has a crystal ball or who is pumping this, okay, knows up to where the price will go. So... I don't need the whole ride, okay? If I can ride somewhere in between, okay, in between this zone, I am more than happy. Okay, so the next one is basically we covered it. I will cover it a little bit more that what are the commonly used indicators and what are the purposes we have, okay? Now, another thing is now that you know why indicators work, don't go for very fancy indicators. Because most likely nobody else other than me is using that indicator in the market, okay? Because like I'm the one who made it or a very limited number of people uses it, okay? So you are not with the crowd anymore, okay? So don't go with that. Rather, use the most common indicators because what's your objective? You want to know what the people are thinking, what they're doing, right? That's it, okay? I get a lot of questions. Okay, or like some people ask pretty commonly that why this custom indicator indicates trend pretty well. Okay, it looks very fancy, doesn't it? That whenever you're uptrending, it turns green. Whenever you're downtrending, it turns red. Okay, and you can see price is literally bouncing off it at some stages and all that. Doesn't it look fancy? Tell me. It does, right? Oh, I'll yeah. give the trade to myself because I made it, okay? So it definitely <laughs> looks fancy. <laughs> okay, it is nothing 
Okay, it is just this. Okay, if I show you guys, you won't believe it. The blue line is my medium EMA, which is my 20 EMA. Does this correspond very well to 20 EMA? That's it. Okay, my super fancy indicator is nothing. It's just a little more sensitive and a little more accurate version of the 20 EMA. That's it. Okay, so I'm comfortable using it because I know I use it as a substitute of 20 EMA. Okay, just because like I'm kind of colorblind, okay, and I mix up the colors at times, I made it very bright green and very bright red just to understand the trend. Okay, so that's it. It has nothing else. So if you use the most common indicators the people are using, you will be in a good level, trust me. Okay, the simpler you keep your trading, the better you will be. Okay, because then you are looking at what others are looking and you are basically going with that only. Okay, nothing else. Okay, so another common indicators that we use are oscillators. Okay, we use RSI, we use statistics, we use MACD, okay, we use Oxum oscillator. There are multiple oscillators out there. If I tell you that they all serve the same purpose, would you believe me? Because that is what it is, okay? I kept up all these three oscillators. Let's move on another chart. Let's move on with SPY. This is my favorite ticker. I trade this day in, day out, not SPY. Actually, I trade futures in SPY, which is ES. We'll cover that as well. Look at the oscillators. These are all oscillators, okay? Just focus on the green line, nothing else. Do you see the same pattern playing out every single time? If it helps, I will move some of the things. Just give me a sec. I forgot how to get this histograms out. Just, yeah. All right. So look at this. Do you see pretty much the same thing in each and every one of them? Up, this is going up. This is up. Okay. Down. Okay, if we are looking here, this is going down. This is going down. This is going down. Okay, again, when we are going up, this is going up, up, up. Okay. So oscillators are great tools, okay? It's a personal preference, whichever one you're going to use, whether it's a statistics, whether it's a RSI, whether it's MACD, it's completely your choice. All oscillators are telling us is that within a certain trend, where the price is, okay? If you're just blindly following an oscillator, this is the easiest way to blow up your account. Trust me, okay? If you're thinking that what we all learned Okay, RSI below 30 is the place to buy and RSI above 70 is the place to sell. Okay, you keep doing that, you will blow up your account in no time. Or if you think, okay, so RSI has moved to 70, I will short it right here. Okay, RSI is right over here, right? RSI moved right over here. If you short it over here, you will be burned. Okay, price still kept on moving up. So it is not telling you that this is overbought, this is oversold, this is overbought, this is oversold for statistics, or when the lines cross, or when the histogram is there, that is the place to buy and sell. No, it's not for that purpose, trust me. All it does is, okay, I'm looking at an uptrend, okay, it is very clear that I'm on an uptrend. This portion of the chart, if we look into, is it not clear we are uptrending right over here? So all I will want to see, there can be two things. One is if my uptrend holds, I would want to buy on a dip. Okay, so whenever my oscillator is dipping a bit, it is coming near my EMAs, that is a good area to buy because my uptrend is still holding. Okay, I have a small dip. A lot of people will say I am utterly stupid buying when like my RSI is at what at this point? It is at 58, okay. Or even if I buy here, they will say, okay, I'm utterly dumb, right? Yeah, buying here is a bad decision, but buying here is not. Because like, what am I doing over here? I'm just looking, okay, I'm still on an uptrend. My uptrend is holding strong. 
my oscillator is giving me that area where I want to get in. That's it. Okay. Give me a random ticker. Any one of you has traded today. Any ticker. And we'll make a trade out of it using what I just told you guys. Can I have a random ticker? Anyone who traded anything? AMD. Sorry? AMD. Yeah, I traded them for the first time today. All right. So tell me your trade. What trade you took? Tell me the time and the trade actually, that you took. I actually took a different uh, approach for this. It, it was a huge dip and I saw some resistance. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. I did. I didn't do it as a day trade. Mm -hmm. I just uh, sw I I'm swinging it. Okay. So when What's I saw the prices prices near one hundred eight, I saw a lot of resistance there. So I just uh, bought it with a stop loss off of one hundred five. Mm -hmm. Then it just went up, but I'm holding it still. Okay. So what are your time frames when you swing trade? Um, that's uh. I haven't figured that out yet. So far, I'm just uh, seeing, uh, you know, if it uh, because of the bad news uh, that was that hit uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, after one one seventeen, it, it dipped to one oh seven. So that's the that's the reason I bought that. I know that AMD is good for it. I, I didn't. I'm not. I'm not using any day trader logic. So don't mm -hmm. don't take my word for it. No, it's perfectly fine. You can have a swing trade as well. Basics, the basics of trading is absolutely the same, whichever time frame you're trading on. Okay, it's absolutely the same. So, you bought at 108, your stop loss is 105, am I correct? That's what you said. Yes. Okay. The very first thing that you need to determine is like, what are the time frames that are applicable for you? Okay, so if you're swinging it, you should be looking at nothing less than daily. Okay, and that is your reference. And your execution time frame can be one hour or four hours. Okay, depending on how long you wanna hold it. So if I'm looking at AMD right now, I don't trade large caps, okay. I'll draw a line right off here. This is right off the bat, okay. I'm not looking at any single thing, okay. I just want to go into this trade within the next two through three minutes. Because typically, I am a scalper, okay? I don't stay in trades that long. I am in and out. I make my few percentages. I'm good, okay? I don't even calculate the money how much I made during the day. That's it. I'm done, okay? And one more line right over here, okay? So this is it. So what am I looking at over here, okay? This is my execution time frame right over here, and this is my reference, okay? A lot of you who trade AMD regularly probably would do way better than me. I don't need view up because I'm swinging it. Okay, I'm least bothered about view up. Among my EMS, if I'm day trading, I use shorter EMS. The longer your time frame is, you use longer EMS. So the only EMS I'll be bothered about is probably 20 and 200 over here. Okay, and 50 or 60 is a good EMA as well. And by the way, there is nothing wrong or nothing right over here. Everyone trades differently. Okay, so looking at this, you didn't do bad at all. Okay, what I would have done is, I would have looked at the waves, okay? What is my indicators telling me, okay? I'm looking at like a wave which began pretty long time ago. It began right over here, if you look at it, okay. Just try to imagine like waves. You can see the wave, right? It's a pretty good wave. Okay, I can expect it to dip a bit more. And then, where do I see next? Where do I wanna go next? I can literally see it, this wave, it hasn't completed, we're consolidating here. Okay, so here basically is the place where I wanna sell this, okay. It's a very good trade you took. No doubt about it. Okay, the only thing I would have done if I was trading it probably, I would have actually waited for the oscillator to come a little bit lower because then I know like if you can see the wave directly from the price that yeah, it might come a little bit lower and 
most likely we are going to touch around this okay because 100 is a very good mark it's a psychological mark so the stop loss rate will be here somewhere around here if it dips okay you would be taken out of the trade my friend at 105 if you're putting such tight stop loss okay unless you have a different risk management strategy so this is not a bad place to place the stop right around here okay and then you just sit back because you're swing trading it you don't need to look at it like every five minutes okay so sit back ride the wave that's it okay and i do have hope you kept some capitals that if it dips a bit more you can get more does it make sense it does okay look over here because all of your i might be completely wrong here but we are going with like what the chart tells us okay all of my oscillators are literally telling me that the cycle most likely is upward trending upward trending upward trending okay look at here imagine it as a wave the oscillator will show you nothing else okay except trying to help you to figure out the waves that's it okay if you bought it somewhere around here it's not a very good idea you can see it right off here right why it was not a good idea okay so the key over here is getting into the right time frame looking at it have your levels then execute the trade that's it and have a plan what you want to do okay so for me if i was trading it personally i would keep it right around here that would be my stop loss below 198 ish okay and i would try to ride out all the the wave up to here okay so no need okay like my fancy charts to have like all three of these together okay i don't use this this is not my chart okay my real chart is this is exactly what i use to trade when i'm trading like futures okay all you see on the chart are like just four ema lines basically the green blue white and the golden these are 9 and 20 because i trade on very short time frame on one minute on the same chart because i'm lazy i don't want to switch flip charts okay i have like the 100 sorry the 20 and the 9 from 5 minutes which is basically a 45 ema chart on the 1 minute and a 100 ema on a 1 minute so 100 ema on 1 minute roughly translates to 20 ema on 5 minutes okay and i just use one oscillator that's it okay this is something that i've been trying from today morning but like it's just, it does exactly the same thing i'm going to blow it up like tonight when i save the chart okay so this is what trading is keep it as simple as possible know what your indicators does which indicator tells you what and that's it you're good to go so as long as you are comfortable with your indicator what you're using you're doing good as long as you know like why you're using it and what's the purpose of it any questions tell me yeah did you just say when you go to the one minute the um on the emas the time the times are different like the 20 is not the 20 i, I, I thought we can that that just confused me a little bit here okay this is my actual chart so what you're seeing is the green is let me bring up the values give me a second so the green one you see is the 9 ema okay that 20 and this EMA, is the one five minute what are we looking at here we're looking at a one minute chart right here okay okay the blue one is my 20 ema which is this one okay, okay. and because i'm lazy i don't like to flip between back and forth between charts and for me the whole purpose is just to understand the trend using the ems okay so what i'm doing is i have the five minute nine and twenty okay if i was using a five minute chart i would be using the five uh, sorry the nine and the twenty ema of that chart i have it plotted on the one minute chart it's a very simple math okay what does the ema tell you the trend over the last minutes right as long as you want it so on a five minute chart the nine ema is telling you the trend of last 45 minutes right i want to see it on a one minute chart all i will do is i will plot a 45 ema so which is basically the white line on a one minute uh, chart 
So this is oh. basically your five minute nine EMA. I got you. I got Same you. math. Okay. Five minute 20 EMA is equal to 100 minutes. Plot a 100 minute EMA on a one minute chart. It will give you the five minute 20. Okay. So now you're not, you're not flipping between five I'm minutes. And between one. charts. Oh, okay. okay. Because I don't use cool. EMA for any other purpose other than to understand the trend. Okay. And I know a lot of people are buying Ooh. off the EMAs. So that's one of my strategies. That's it. Okay. I'm not doing anything out of the, what you call, like something that I invented or I am doing. It's nothing like that. My trading strategies are very simple. Okay. And I'm pretty happy with it because like consistently it makes money for me in a simplified way. Any other questions on the indicators? If not, we will move on to the next topic, which is what I typically do. And I often get questions. Okay. Which is futures. Okay. So for me, like my journey was starting with like OTC. Then I moved on to small caps, mustered it a bit. Okay. Which was my bread and butter. Whatever I lost in OTC, I made it through that. Wanted to try my hand tra trading options because at that time I felt like I wanted one ticker, which I could wake up every single morning would be there. I wouldn't have to search what's the flavor of the day. Okay. What's the pump and dump of the day? Go into it, trade it. Okay. Uh, so that's the reason I wanted to trade spy options. So. I spent from October of last year till December of last year trying to learn how to trade SPY options. Okay. Wasn't doing great on it. When I learned the hang of it, I figured it out like, no, there is something better than options, which is futures, which suits my trading style more. Because like I said, I work full time. Okay. So I don't get breaks very often or I don't get light days very often. Like today was a light day. I could stay in the trade for quite a while. Okay. And I want to trade in something which is there always. The liquidity is there. So basically, we trade SPY futures, okay, which is ES and MES, as you can see over here. Okay, these are the two tickers. So if you guys are interested in learning what futures is, we have a whole section dedicated to it. And the futures education has the basics, okay. Some of the videos we made earlier, then some of the basic uh, ideas and everything. Okay, the PDFs are all saved here. So these are there. And plus we have our own room, which is the futures room. Okay. So that's there. Then the alerts, sometimes we give it out, which are there, but we really don't encourage alerts because this room is mainly run by me and James. Rather, what we want is that people learn how to get the trades in. Okay. And I'll show you the exact trade that I took. And moreover, sorry, I missed it. Just one more thing that I'm a funded trader, so I don't trade with my own money anymore. Okay. So I get like, I have two fifty thousand $50,000 accounts, which is given to me by a company. And my profit is shared like 90% and 10%. I get to keep 90% and they get the 10% out of it. I'm more than happy. If they said 75, 25, I would be even happy. Okay. Because like, I'm not trading with my own money. Right? So my mentality or my psychology is different than anyone who's trading with their own money. Because for me, I know what's the maximum there is for me to lose, which is the fees that I paid for my funded account. That's it. Okay. If I lose 3000 blow up the account, it's not actually 3000. It's probably I calculated once it's probably somewhere around $300. Okay. And by grace of God, I make more than that on every single day. Okay. So if I suggest that if anyone is thinking of going with futures or with Forex, those type of things, always try for a funded account. If you guys have questions regarding how those work and that, let us know. Okay, we'll be happy to help you. And I do want to give a huge shout out to Yogan over here. Okay, he just got funded today. Okay, wish you all the best, wow. Yogan, and congratulations once more. Thank you. <laughs> how long did it take you for you to get funded, if I may ask? I was about eight tries uh, in the past, uh, like four or five days, but yeah. It was, it was, it was tough. <laughs> it is. Okay. If I ask you to give a thousand bucks from you, okay. Not 50,000. Okay. A thousand bucks. Would you give it to me? Of course not. Right. You would want me to prove that I know how to trade before you give me that money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Okay, so everybody wants to protect their money, save their money, and that's it. Okay, so that's what we do. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I just uh, I, I just hit uh, hit it today, but I, I don't. I think it's got to be seven days. I've had to try a couple times, but uh, James was saying that it's got to be uh, minimum seven, seven days. days minimum seven. Days. On the, is it for um, <clears throat> your original account or from the one you hit with? Uh, Richard, sorry, like you're with Apex, reset. right? The same company that yeah. I use. Okay. For yeah. Apex, you have to trade minimum seven days. Okay. So that they want to make sure that you just did not make the profit target in a fluke. Okay. You just had one good yeah, year yeah. you made it. They want to see the consistency. So my suggestion is if you are achieving the target in less than seven days, on the remaining days, just take like one contract, okay, of MES or MNQ, and just be in and out within one tick, just to show like you traded on that day. Yeah, okay. Okay, but sure. you can go on as long as you want. Okay, if it takes you like twenty days, thirty days, or even two months, it's perfectly fine. Um, but the seven days, like I had to do a reset. It's not from the reset. It's it's not your original time, right? It's from the day the account you actually hit. Yeah, it's not you, a reset. You are reset. Then it counts from the day that you do the reset. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's what James said. All right, thanks, yeah. man. Okay. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Any questions? Feel free to hit us up. Okay. And if you need any help with the funded accounts, feel free to let us know. Okay. So I'll be showing you guys two trades that I took for the whole day. And these are time stamped. Okay, I can't fake it, guys. So let's start. Okay, so 1051, I'm saying I'm going short on ES. So those of you who are looking at it the first time, on ES basically, or on any futures, you trade basically by the points, okay? So let's say one point here, 4516 to 4517 is worth $50 on one contract, okay? And one point can be broken down into four ticks, Okay, so each tick is a quarter. So you will see this moving in ticks of like 0.25 right over here. Okay, so you see like this moves into ticks. Each tick right over here is worth $12.5 and each full point is worth $50. Okay, so let's move on to 10.51. This is invalidated. right over here. And this is the trade I took, right? So I'm shorting ES 1051 at 4516.50. Right over here. Okay, this is the trade I took at 1051 right at this place, 46150. Any idea why I took it right there and why I shorted it? Anyone, there is no wrong answer. Please tell me. I'll pull up this pie chart as well if it helps. Several rejections and uh, uh, the oscillators are showing that uh, they overbought. Excellent. Okay, excellent answer. I really liked it. Okay, so let's move on to spy around that time. I typically use two monitors when I trade. I am still not that smart to trade off my phone. Okay, so typically this is on one side and I have my chart on the other side. And like I told you, my chart exactly looks like this. I don't have anything else on my chart when I'm trading. Okay, that's it. Okay, 11.51. We are right up here. Okay. So say we haven't seen this. We are right up here at 11.51. So it was 1051, right? 1150. Uh, sorry, 1051? 1051. Oh, yeah, my bad. 1051. We're right over here. Let's mark it. Yep, this is the candle. Okay, so we'll just put a mark so that we know where it is. I reject, I shorted exactly over here. Tell me your answer again. 
I want everyone to hear that because it was a perfect answer. I saw multiple rejections, yeah. uh, like the resistance the rejections and your oscillator were indicating that it was overbought. Mm -hmm. Okay. And? That was my answer. Perfect. Uh, okay. So we have it right over here. Let's just move it a little bit more. Okay. I just want to make sure that we have the bar. This is the bar where I'm shorting. Okay. Look, what happened? We started the day. Okay. Yesterday was a dumping day. We saw that. Tried to break through 200 EMA. Didn't work. VWAP could not hold. This is a retest of VWAP, right? I'm not a genius, guys. I'm not inventing anything, okay? I'm just figuring out what everyone else is trying to see and do. And I'm doing that. And I said I stay in trades very short time. So right around here, this is the place I can see. It tried to break VWAP. It's a fake breakout. It did not work. Came down. 1051, I'm short. Okay. 4615.50, which is right over here in this chart. And like you said, absolutely correct. Okay. Look, my oscillator is showing we already pushed up, right? Still, we couldn't break view up if I was looking at the spy chart side by side. We are rejecting right of the 5 minute 20, which is a strong EMA, which is the golden line. Okay. So I shorted here. What's my target? You see this line over here? These are the levels. I have it. Okay. Because before I even started the day, I have my references all drawn up on a 30 minute chart because you use a bigger time frame to get your points. Okay. So I have this before going to sleep. I will probably draw out or see if there is any change. And this is not over very long, over just the last few days because I sculpt. I don't swing. Okay. If I was swinging, I would have taken my levels from the daily. Okay. So right over here, I'm going in. Okay. All I want to show you guys is how to take a trade. Where are the entries? Okay. And where are the exits? There is no cookie cutter answer, like I said, on what's the right entry, what's the right exit. Okay. So right over here, I'm done. Within minutes, right? This move to is moving down. Look at this. So what I did is I take small profits. I don't mind, right? I moved my stop loss down, okay, to 4515. I'm already in the money, okay? I don't care even if this trade went against me because my stop loss will hit. And the beauty of trading futures is you can trade it 23 hours a day, unlike pre-market and after hours on other stocks, okay, on the typical assets that we trade, stop losses work all the time, okay? So basically, I'm in here, okay? Just waiting and sitting back, okay? Then, 10.54, I move my stop loss down one more point. Okay, whatever happens, I will be up two and a half points. And I typically trade with two contracts. So two contracts into two and a half points into 50 bucks is 250. I'm happy. Okay. Then, I had my plan before, right? 4.612. You can see it right on the chart. This is that blue line. It hit here. Okay, I took out one contract. I'm done. Okay, so that is a four and a half point trade for me. The second one, I'm still in. Okay, but I covered my stop loss. If it goes down, I'll be moving my stop down. Okay, so after I covered here, I moved my stop to 13.5. Okay, which basically got hit and I was taken out the trade right over here. Okay, I'm out fully. Okay, so this is a six minute trade. Nothing much. Okay, that was like one of the breaks I had in between like two work commitments. So I took four and a half points plus three points. So that's total seven and a half points on this trade. That's there minus the commissions, which is, sorry, 798, let's say eight bucks. So that's 367 for me. Okay, just on this trade. Okay. This is more important, okay? Even though you will see the results later. I shorted again after five minutes at 4518, okay? And this is my target. I have had to average up at 1105. Okay, my target was 4519. Oh, sorry, my average was 4519 because I took another two contracts, okay? And 
at 4520. So my average is like 4519. 4518 plus 4520. Okay. Just remember the times. This is 1102 and this is 1105. This is right here. Okay. I took it right here. 4519. I'm giving the trade a little bit room to breathe. Okay. It's coming down. Okay. I did not close it. All right. Then it moved against me totally. And if I bring up the spy chart. So let's move this line to 1105, which is here. Okay. The beauty of this is for spy, you guys needed to move like one whole point for your options to give you any sort of profit. And if you're trading like zero DTE, you're having premium burns all the time. Here, there is no premium burn. Okay. So right around here, my average is 4519. I'm looking at this. Looking right here, looking at the SPY chart, I can see right here, I made a bad trade. Okay. That this is consolidating, moved up. Okay. What do I do? Do I sit back? I wait. Okay. Or do I buy more? Okay. With the hope like I will sell more, price will come down and I do it. Okay, I wouldn't do any of those. For me, basically, it's most important not to be a bag holder. Okay, that's the last thing I want to have that experience. I had enough of it, honestly. So when I'm seeing it consolidating and the price not being pushed down at all, I made up my mind, okay, that if I can get out at break even, I am very happy. Okay, all I will lose is my commission, which is $4 into four contracts is 16 bucks. Even if I get out a little bit higher, it is okay. Why am I so confident that probably like I'll be able to get my break even? Because I know very well it is testing the 9 EMA. It will come back to the 9 EMA before having the next leg up. Okay. So right out here, you can see on this one, I have a hard stop at 4521 because I don't want to lose money much. Okay. Then, okay, we are pretty optimistic. Okay, going here. So I said like, all right, I'm four contracts in. I took out first two contracts at 4519 at 1110. I did not wait even for it to fall below. Okay, you will see like at 1110, right around here, it hit this, I'm out. Okay, two contracts are out. Okay, next, yes, it hit a little bit low, but I'm not waiting for it. Okay, because at break even, I'm going to get out because Others may think, okay, now it started going down. I'm seeing the red candle. It might go down. I might be again back in the money. Okay, I wouldn't do that because I'm no longer comfortable in this trade. If I'm not comfortable in the trade, I'm not going to stay in it. Okay, so I'm right over here. When I saw this, what I did is I moved my stop exactly at break even, okay, which is nine. So on the next candle, it dipped a little bit low, hit it, I'm out of the trade. Okay, so if I net off, so on the first trade, I made 367. On the second trade, I gave back 16 bucks. Still, within a span of less than half an hour, I walked out with like 351. Would you guys take the trade with me or not? Tell me. Is it a good decision or not a good decision? I want honest feedback here. That's a good decision. You still have one day's pay. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I say it was a good decision to get out, but you still left with a day's pay, three hundred fifty-one dollars. Exactly. I traded again later. Okay, I traded again later. Okay, and that is that. So that is different. Okay, but like I'm still in the trade. Okay, I'm still in the trade, so I'm still making money out of here. Okay, so that's perfectly fine with me. I don't mind. Okay, so those are the things. Okay, that you need to keep in mind. Like if you are not comfortable in the trade. Don't stay in it, okay? Because no matter what, your conviction is not there, okay? So, and you need to have a plan. That's all I wanted to say. Like, when you're doing it, you need to have a plan when to get in, when to get out. And you need to know more importantly, like, okay, this is the place beyond which I will not stay in this trade. Because even if I took a hit at 4521 four, one over here, I would have lost 400 bucks, okay? Which is like two points into four contracts into 50. 
I can make it back tomorrow. I know that very well. Okay, if not later in the day. But if I stayed in the trade and this went up all the way up, okay, just went all the way up, up to here, and then I'm chewing my nails and figuring out, okay, God, what have I done? Okay, this is way too much, 10 points, right? Into four contracts, into 50. Which would you take? A loss of 400 bucks or a loss of $2,000? Definitely the first one, okay? So that's how you decide your exits. It's you who can only decide this. Because even if you make me, bend me, make me into a protein shake, feed me into you, Take alpha with it, okay, put him in that same protein check. Okay, you won't become alpha or you won't become me because you are different than me. Okay, your mindset is different. So unless you have your own strategy, you know your behavior, you wouldn't be comfortable going into the trade and consistently making money. I'll show you guys two more trades. Okay, then we will keep the floor open for some questions and answers. Two more trades that I today this is something I traded 2,000 shares in the morning okay I had two entries and can anyone tell me, like, what's the trade I took? I would love to have the answer. There is no wrong answer. Take a guess. No volunteers? Come on, guys. You're supposed to make it interactive. Okay. So, what I did is, I saw the first candle spiking up. Okay, 8 a.m. is a very good time to catch this type of trades, okay? They pump for a few minutes and then they just die. Okay, but you have to be pretty prudent. And I have been doing this for a pretty long time. So some of the tickers I already know, okay, because if you're showing up every day, you will remember the names after a while. And most of my charts, because I have traded this thing some or other time, are marked. One good thing about trading view is like my lines are always there, okay? So when I looked at it, First push up, up to here, okay. By now, I know my charts pretty well, okay. At least I hope so. So I'm waiting to see where it goes. Went up, 229, came back a little, okay. I shorted my first 1,000 shares right over here at 224, okay. Then on the same candle, it went up, okay. I shorted again. I saw the high. I kept another order at 229, it went up to 236 on the same candle. I'm not really worried because, again, what's my size? That's 20% of my day trading portfolio. Okay. So I'm right up to here. Next candle, it started falling. Okay. Where did I set my price target? My first target was around $2. Okay. $2, I knew there would be lots of resistance. I put it at 201. I took out 50%. So right around here, I took out like 50% up. How long did I stay in the trade? Five minutes? Okay. Next, what do I do? I am looking at my 20 EMA. I don't want to stay very long in this trade. Okay. It can go all the way down to $1. I don't care. Okay. If I make my money, I'm more than happy. So I'm seeing my 20 EMA at that point is somewhere around here. I set it up a little bit higher. Okay. I don't do round numbers. I do like one cent up. We'll cover that on a later class. I put like 191 for the next 1000. I am out. So my average here is 224 plus 229 divided by 2 minus 196 because I covered at 201 and at 191. So that's like 30 cents per share. That's not a bad trade, right? For a few minutes now what made me go into this trade i have been trading over the last two and a half years i have seen this name multiple times i know like this name it never holds up the price that's not the only thing i'm basing on okay the moment i see this i turn onto my daily chart okay this is all marked so i know very well okay this is right over here okay 
it moved up all the way up and what it is trying to do it moved to 224 ish you see the 200 EMA on the daily it's right there so you know it very well when you turn to a bigger time frame up to how much can it go okay max it can go probably it can go beyond but like the probability is it will not be able to break this the 200 EMA is a very strong support or resistance whichever way you look at it the bigger time frame you go into the more stronger it becomes so this is the perfect area to short okay if I was looking here having FOMO one of you guys had this question that in the morning you see it and then you feel like you're missing out on the trade you want to jump in if I see it here next bar it drops I'm thinking oh damn I could have shorted it right okay now it fell below 2 let me short it here I short it here I would be sweating out all this place okay don't do that immediately go okay if you miss the trade you miss the trade tomorrow there will be another one later in the day there will be another one I'll show you okay right over here okay so you see your mark on the daily okay right around here you start shorting it you see here okay take a little bit up you know like most likely it's gonna fall back and you have seen it falling back in the past okay that's it and this is the other trade I took this is a very risky trade disclaimer don't try to do these things at home when I was a kid this was a favorite disclaimer in the movie series series on TV okay this is TUP retails favorite stock right running very hard for the last few days it's on a downtrend today they had their earnings okay so what I did is this happened okay I was looking at it in the after hours all right so I had my lines drawn all over okay you see this line over here at 578 then basically what's happening it went all the way up okay right here right it's going up it's going up we are seeing this okay so where would I short it tell me and by now you guys know right I scalp I don't stay in trades very long I have been telling it multiple times so I was waiting right it went up it went up okay I didn't notice around this time this was a perfect long but it's risky because you never know when the ball is gonna drop okay so I waited up to this line to break because I knew like it's gonna go up a little bit more probably because like everybody is expecting when it is here it's gonna hit the six dollar mark so I shorted right at 584 okay right on this candle it started turning red this is my entry okay any guess where I covered it anyone take a guess you should know my style by now I showed it in the last trade uh, I'm guessing give me a second here mm -hmm. where so two minutes later when you see those two uh, green candles and uh, the ha it, it looks like a hammer no uh, yes it looked like it looks like a hammer the green mm -hmm. ones okay I didn't wait this one long I didn't wait this long because I'm looking at my 9 EMA okay and this is a very risky shot because this is retail's current favorite this is retail's AMC for the day right so all I'm doing is I'm looking at my 9 EMA which is right around five dollar mark okay and my target is set at 511 okay the moment it hit 511 right around here just on the next minute I am out I'm done okay so I'm pretty happy this is like 400 shares roughly about what 70 cents after commissions and everything I'm more than happy so you don't see I'm not using the indicator to tell me anything else okay I'm totally counter trading this it went up I waited reached my level okay so let the trade come to you don't chase and then this might go down all the way below to three dollars tomorrow I won't be very surprised right so I'm not waiting for that I got out here it fell down more okay to below five a lot of people probably is thinking okay this is gonna go back again trust me the market typically does exactly opposite of what you and me are thinking okay so people who basically shorted after it went down to five dollars they're smoked look where the price action is it went all the way up okay 
So this is the big money who is selling over here. They don't mind waiting a few days to cover it when it comes back all the way down because whatever goes up very quickly will come down equally quick or even more quick. Okay, so that's it guys. Okay, you don't need to be very complicated with your trading. Keep things simple, have a strategy, know your entries and exits, potential entries and exits before you go out. Okay, and what was my exit over here? I'm surprised nobody asked me this question. If we broke this line, okay, if I had a body close over this line, okay, around 610 or something, I would be gone out of the trade. That's it. So I was risking roughly about 25 cents again here, 25, 30 cents roughly over here. That's it. Okay. So you need to know like how much you can get to risk how much. And I'm not trading with a large size on this one because I know like this is the hot potato for now. Okay. People's eyes are on this. And everyone, trust me, mark my words. Okay. Next week when we have a class, who bought over here, we'll come back to this chart next week and see where they're next week. Okay, so that's it. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any questions, we can take the next few minutes to answer those. Any questions? You have a question. Please tell me. Okay, so the thing that's kind of messing me up is, um, so when you have your levels, right? Your um, upper and lower levels to break in the morning. When you get that long candle that finally breaks that can that uh, finally breaks that level, mm -hmm. that's what makes it freeze because I'm not sure if that's the candle I jump in on after it breaks or I wait for the the retracement of the pullback. We have a look at it. Give me the ticker. It freeze and then you know. Mm -hmm. Give me the ticker. Let's have a look at it. Um. Shit, it can be anyone today. I'm not sure if it happened today, Anything but I know yes. Past, no problem. Tell me. Uh, it, I think it was spy yesterday. Spy or the QQQ, one of them. I think yesterday I they really broke. I really want to learn how to trade QQQ. If you are good at it, my friend, you're most welcome to teach me. That thing I'm is not... so volatile; it's unbelievable. Yeah. Because I want to have a backup to trading QQQ. The futures for QQQ is MNQ and NQ. But it's so volatile, I'm still giving my money back. Okay, so not very comfortable with it yet. Not at all comfortable with it yet, if I'm honest. Okay. Was that yesterday when it went up? Or I can't Yesterday remember. was a dumping day. Yesterday was a dumping day. Yep. So maybe it broke down then. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me see. So we are in yesterday. Tell me what time you want to I'm trying to determine. So what what time frame? Yeah, see that long. That's a long candle right there. This one. yesterday. Yeah, that see that long candle there. Mm -hmm. So when it, that long candle hits, mm -hmm. that's on the one minute chart, right? Mm -hmm. See it did. See and it did pull back, and then it finally went down after that. So that's right. what I guess that I'm trying to determine. Do I when, when do I jump in or looking at the one minute, the five minute? Mm -hmm. Where do I take okay. that trade? Do I get I'll in with the, part? the manner that I trade? Okay. And everybody's mm -hmm. style is entirely different. So for me, I use two time frames always. All right. My bigger time frame is my reference time frame. All it does is show me the stronger trade. Okay, that's it. And this one is my execution. This is where I take my trades. Okay. Our typical rule of thumb is your reference time frame should be five times bigger than your execution time frame. So if you are trading one minute on one minute, this should be five. If you are trading five minutes, logically it should be 25, but nobody looks at a 25 minute chart. Everybody looks at a 30 minute chart. So that's why you should have the 30 minutes up here. Okay, if you are trading on 15 minutes, then your multiplier should be one hour, 15 minutes. Nobody looks at that. People look at one hour. So we also look at one hour. If you're trading on an hourly chart, it's four hours. If you're trading on a four hourly chart, it should be weekly or daily at the least. Okay, that's the first thing. Second is, you're looking here. Look at the chart on the left. What does it show you? Am I on an uptrend or on a day trend, downtrend? You're in the downtrend. I'm on a clear downtrend. This yeah. is my ideal 
okay shorting opportunity the violet line over here is my vwap the moment this breaks okay this is a false breakout entirely whoever got on calls thinking this is vwap break okay got smoked okay so here this is your perfect place once the view up breaks okay always go for retest instead of jumping on the first one okay look okay you missed this okay you didn't take the shots doesn't matter okay again it's trying to break it's trying to break i wouldn't take it actually out even here okay for me this is the place i would love to take it because see how many times it tried to break false breakout didn't work out second time didn't work out third time didn't work out just think of it this way you take a hammer and you're trying to put a nail on the wall first time you hit it it's going in little bit second time it's going more third time it's going more if you keep on hitting it you will break the wall right same right. thing the same number of time something tries to break a support or resistance it fails the more likely it is going to fail okay so once twice thrice it's not working out okay so very low chance this is going to work anymore so if you took it right over here you have more confirmation okay your trade is most likely to work out if you took it here i guess you would be pretty rich by now that was a huge drop okay so right around here okay always look for the retest does okay. it make sense yeah yeah okay. any other questions If not, then thank you all again for attending and let's call it a night. Okay. If you guys have any questions regarding futures or funded accounts, feel free to hit us up. Okay. If you have any questions regarding trading, share. Okay. I will try my best to answer with whatever knowledge I have. Okay. So my objective is very simple that if it helps even one person to be a little better trader, that will fulfill my objective. That's it. Okay. Thank you all again for attending. I'm uh, sorry. Hello. Russell. Yep. Tell me. I'm sorry. Um, is that a stochastic in the indicators list by any chance? This one. The one that you're using there is that is that actually in our indicator list or no? It is not, but it is the common statistics indicator. There is no difference to it. Okay. The only difference is. It's not like I like seeing my name everywhere. Trust me, it's not that. Okay. It's just like I wanted to customize a little bit so that I have the crosses, the greens and the yellows. Okay, like whenever the first line crosses the slower line, I have the indicator pointed right in front of me. That's it. Okay, by now I'm sure Russell, you figured out I'm a pretty lazy guy. Okay, so instead of squinting at the screen, I look at the arrows. Mm, yeah, yeah. I okay, like that. So that's it. It's yep. just a normal no. statistics okay. indicator. And I use the common values. Another thing, guys. When you the one on your other the one on your other chart's different though, isn't it? This one? It's not oh. that, that one's the RSI, isn't it? No, no, no. That's also statistics. I just that's also statistics. Like, yeah. Okay, it's the same. Oh yeah, actually that's a lot different. Okay, the sticks are attached to that too. Okay. So, and another thing, just keep in mind, try to use the most commonly used values. Okay. I have nothing against people who use custom values, but then again, think of it this way. The market is not seeing what you are seeing okay and i don't think any of us has a crystal ball to see a little bit better more what than the market sees okay so those fancy emas like 52 ema okay or like 75 ema or when i started trading i literally tried every indicator under the sun okay and all the values i used to have something called 98 ema okay i could never figure out why i had that and it never worked properly, to be honest, because it was the same thing as 100 EMA. I never had an edge. Okay, any other question? Sure. Nope, that should do it. Right now, I just have a standard MACD and RSI over here now. More than enough. Okay, keep yeah. things simple. Okay, less is more over here. Gotcha. All right, less is more. Trust me. Okay, the less amount of indicators you have the less complicated your strategy the more you will succeed okay so if nothing else thank you all again for attending okay and we'll call it a night over here bye thank you okay, thank you